look at this soul pocket. Oh, I love a little side pocket. Uh, 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 uh. Standing in line. Standing in line. Oh, I guess I might as well keep that on there. Oh, so is it not on right now? Standing in line. Oh, I gotta share. What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Library Live. Hold on. Because these glasses are just like... I'm over it. I want LASIK. I want LASIK so bad. Like, but I'm scared. I can't have y'all fucking it off, like, playing to my eyeballs, and then I'm running around here Stevie Wonder. Because if you fuck it up, it's a wrap. I want out of life if you fuck it up. So... But I'm so over glasses. I'm over glasses. I'm over contacts. I'm over all the shit. Let me get the comments. Get the comments in. I am so excited to be back. Listen, we took, we was like gone for a minute. Now we back with the jump off. Goons in the club. Case some jump off. And baby, listen. I had to move my chair. <laughs> I'm so excited to be back. It's been a week. Last week, uh, what did we do? We we was on break. I need a break. Because the week before last, we did um, like five Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Thursday. So we did four days out of the week. We was on the line. Four days out of the week, we was on the line. And that was exhausting. So the following week, I took a break. <laughs> ah, it's, it's really exhausting. Like, we think, like, this whole content creator sitting here making videos and doing podcasts and stuff. Y'all girls think that shit is easy. You think this shit is easy and fun until you work in a regular day job or night job, nine to five, plus doing this. Man, I be, I be beat. Anywho. That's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the mess. Listen, first of all, before we even get started, let me just say, y'all might hear my air going because I'm in my Go Be Great, my Everything and Then Some podcast hoodie that is so nice and warm and snug. I don't know whose scent is on this hoodie. It, I don't know whose scent this is, but damn it, I need to know. I'm, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's super cute and it's super, I like hoodies that I can wear like a shirt. And this is like a, it's not like one of the big hoodies, like really like oversized hoodies, which are cute for an occasion. But this one is nice and you know, it fits. It has a nice little, like a shirt, almost. Like a shirt hoodie, almost, but it's thick. Like this is some like curl up and go to sleep hoodie. And it got this little side pocket on my, um, is this like a change pocket? On the, uh, like right here. It's like a little change pocket. I love an extra pocket. Okay? Somewhere I put my quarters and things of that nature. But that's it here nor there. Check out my good Judy's at the Everything and Then Some podcast, who I love dearly for your merch desires and things of that nature. They got hoodies. They got shirts. They got cups, which I should have put something in because I'm parched. But, um, yeah, check them out. They're on all social media platforms and things of that nature. So, listen, how was you guys' week? I hope you guys had a good week. My week was long and daunting, but we made it through, and that's all that matters. I am trying on this whole positive vibe. This is like week three 
of the me removing myself completely from work on my off days. I slipped up this morning. I was in the group chat this morning texting like I was at work. And I forgot. I was like, oh, I forgot. I got to go. And it completely put them on mute, put them on block. Don't, don't, don't talk to me until Saturday when I'm back at work. So it's been really beneficial for me and my spirit. I've been feeling a lot better about life and things of that nature. And some good things are coming work-wise. So be prepared. Anywho, so let us indulge in the mess. I have been gone for a minute, but I'm back with the jump off. And um, if you haven't had the chance, head over to our Instagram. It's at welcome to the number two, the library live and get into the mess of it all. Now, no, I haven't been posting because I told you I've been, I've been gone for a week. I took a break. I took a break. I deserved. But I'm back now and we'll be posting more and things that nature. So we are going to get right into the mess. Let us dive right in. So um, there's a story going on. Well, it's basically dead now, but let's just talk about it. So Kylie Jenner has a friend who um, was apparently at one point in time her makeup artist, apparently, or did a couple of makeup gigs for her, something like that. Just enough for her to call him a friend. Um, he had to have some kind of major surgery done. And Kylie posted his, go he has a GoFundMe. So Kylie posted his GoFundMe on her Instagram on her little like uh, story and the girls was dragging Kylie down boots okay they like I wish the fuck I would donate to Kylie Jenner's friends go fund me for a surgery and this bitch can just get him the money I think it's something up to the tune of sixty thousand dollars sixty thousand dollars about or something along those lines I don't remember I just know it was a lot um and they was giving Kylie something she could feel all up and down the internet. Now, Kylie is one of my favorites. She's probably my second favorite right behind Kim. So, I was at, you know, ready. I was ready to go for Kylie. So, here's what my thoughts were. Um, she did address it. Let me tell you what happened. She addressed it first. Then I'll tell you how I feel. So, she addressed it. She made a post, a long post saying, not only did she donate to the GoFundMe um, she donated and she posted. So, suck her ass in so many words was what she was saying. Um, I wouldn't have cleared shit up in my opinion. But here's how I feel about the situation. First of all, y'all gotta understand. Kylie might be rich and famous and things of that nature, but that man didn't come out of her coochie. He didn't. He didn't. Just like Chloe said down there in the comments, it is not... Kylie's responsibility to pay for this man's surgery that he had. Listen, if I become rich and famous, when I become rich and famous and things of that nature, now, in the event, if my friends need something, they know they can ask me, but I would hope they know that <laughs> depending on the dollar amount, it might be a smooth hell no. And I wouldn't expect them to either. I wouldn't call my friend on the line, hey, can you let me borrow $30,000 or can you just give me $30,000? My parents, and who told me? Mama. My grandmother always told me, you don't let nothing you can't afford to lose. So if you can't afford to give me $30,000 without ever seeing it again, don't give it to me. And there will be no hard feelings. That's just that. I don't understand how y'all was in the internet dragging Kylie down like that. And that ain't her child. And he ain't come out her coochie. Only one she got to worry about is that little, uh, she got Stormy, right? She got, yeah, she's Stormy. That's the only one she got to worry about paying a $60,000 bill for. That's it. And maybe one of them men she got running around that house of hers. But other than that, no. No. Our grandmothers, great minds think alike. Grandmothers is it. <laughs> so, I, I'm on Team Kylie on this one. And for the most part, I'm usually on Team Kylie. Because I like Kylie a lot. Um, and you know I love Kim. So, that's that. Um, speaking of Kardashians, while we're at it, uh, I just apologized to Chloe last week. And here she go with the bullshit again. So, I haven't got a chance to get into the new the season or the season series finale 
uh, Keeping Up With Kardashians because I'm still trying to catch up. I'm on season 10 now. I'm getting there, y'all. But um, apparently she addressed her alleged uh, situation with Tristan again on this week's episode and how she is really under pressure and all this. Oh, girl, just we already done talked about you, Kai, or uh, Chloe, and we gonna keep talking about you. So, girl, if you want to be with Tristan, you be with Tristan. Okay? Just you sit there and you be with Tristan and you get your life. We gonna talk about you regardless, whether you with Tristan or not. Quiet as kept. <laughs> so, girl, go get your Tristan life. If that's what makes you happy, go for it. Fuck what we got to say. Well, I mean... Yeah, fuck what we got to say, because we going to say it anyway. <laughs> we going to say it like we mean it, especially right on these parts. But I, I just can't get with that whole, this is about to be her whole last hoorah. Her debating whether she should have another baby with this man just because we going to talk about her. Girl, don't nobody give a fuck. Ugh. Just let it go. Be with the man, had a baby, be stupid, and be happy. It's better to be stupid and happy than smart and miserable, if you ask me. That's just coming from me. That's just my opinion. Don't take it. Don't take it and run with it. That's just my opinion. It is better to be stupid and happy. How'd it go? Stupid and, <laughs> stupid and happy than smart and miserable. That's just my opinion. Moving on. We done with Kardashian news for the for the now, okay? So let's move on. Z1079 is going live. I don't give a shit. Uh, Cardi B. Oh, Cardi B. Okay. So congratulations, first of all. Cardi B's broke another record. I don't remember what it was this time. Quite frankly, I'm sick of these records. I'm, I'm sick of these records that these girls nowadays are breaking. Like, I was talking to somebody. I don't remember who. I think it was on, like, Twitter or somewhere. People be like... The first person, the first female rapper to sell a million records while eating a Pop-Tart in the checkout line at Walmart. Like, it's just like, did we have these records back in the day? Like, was, like, our people, was our parents' musician breaking records like this too? Because I just feel like it's just like we making up shit at this point. But nonetheless, congratulations to Cardi B because y'all know I like Cardi and things of that nature. But she done made another damn video. She opened the video up with, now I don't got to prove nothing to nobody with her nails. I wish I had something fake with them nails. I ain't got to prove nothing to nobody, but insert this long, it's like maybe six or seven slides worth of her talking about the record she done broke, the whole payola allegation, things of that nature. Ugh, I'm just like, Cardi, okay, we get it. You broke another record. Up is apparently a TikTok smash hit. Um, and I say that loosely. I say that very loosely. Because, quite frankly, and to be honest, Up is cute. It's a cute little one, too. But without the help of TikTok, Up would not do anything. I don't hear Up on the radio. I don't hear WAP on the radio. These girls are making these coins off of, like, streams and TikTok. And that's okay, because that's the era that we're in. That is perfectly fine. Do not get it twisted. However, call it what it is. You girls ain't running the radio like my girl Dua Peep. Miss Dua Lipa is eating the queen of radio, in my opinion. Because every time I get in my car, I can shuffle through the five stations that I got on my car, on little, the little dial. And Dua Peep, Dua Lipa can be on at least two of them five. Because she's that girl. And that's just that. I love me some Dua Lipa. Especially that song with uh, uh, the baby. That song that's out now, uh, Levitating. That's my shit. I be in the car like, woo! But anyway, um, congratulations, Cardi girl. Uh, stop making these videos. Because I done, I done blocked you already. I had to find this post on the library's page. So stop making these goddamn videos. I love this hoodie. Every time I just keep looking at I'm not even looking in the camera, I'm looking at myself. In the camera. <laughs> like, I'm not even looking at in the actual. I'm looking at myself. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, 
Thanks, Jerry Bear. It's such a good hoodie. I love it. Eee. Okay. So moving on. Thank you, Cardi. Uh, so Justin Bieber put out a new album. Um, I don't know if you guys care. I care a little. Just a little. Um, Justin Bieber was looking real spicy in these pictures. I was like, that's Justin. Hey, Justin. I had no idea. I mean, Justin has always looked like, at least like now, recently, since he got them tattoos and been married to Miss Baldwin or Haley Bieber, excuse me, and things of that nature. He been given something we can feel. And this little new album he put out, uh, Justice, it's okay. You know, I'll give it maybe like a a six or seven. It ain't like, um, what was the album y'all told me to listen to that I was so here for? Uh, what was it? You girls said, I mean, this album was critically acclaimed. What was it called? It wasn't Purpose. Was it Purpose? No, it wasn't Purpose. I think it was before Purpose. I don't remember. But nonetheless, it was a good one. This album was just okay. The songs that I hear on the radio, I can do without. I don't like that Chance the Rapper man. I mean, no hard feelings to him. I'm sure he's a great guy. But I just don't care for his artistry in this regard. There's a song that he put out with Chance the Rapper that I just don't care about um then there's the other song i'm so low, low, low. it's very much dying cat justin bieber's never been like a vocal acrobat to me journal yes that's it that's the album now that's the album um but yeah the lonely song i don't care for it's like i said it's very much um vocal strain going through um please feel sorry for me i i don't um, especially when you wake up every day to Haley Baldwin Bieber or whatever the hell, Haley Bieber Baldwin, however that goes when you get married. Um, nonetheless, the new album is cute. Six out of seven. Justice is available now on all your streaming platforms. Check it out, things of that nature, if you want to. Um, and he's here on the cover of Billboard, giving something we can feel. To let you know that he is real. I'm just glad he got over that phase. The black phase is what I like to call it. When he wanted to be a little black kid, I'm just glad he got over that. Because that was exhausting. That was very much exhausting to watch him, Justin Bieber, little little Justin Bieber from Canada, struggling to keep up with the black kids. It was hard to watch. I'm just saying. So, that's that. Congratulations, Justin. Moving on. Okay. I listen, I am very far removed from this entire situation, but because it has been flooding my timeline and my news feeds over the past week, I'm going to lightly address. Lightly. So, uh, his name is Derek. What is his name? Derek Jackson. So, I try to pay these girls who be like, like these social media therapists and the social media uh, gurus and things that I like the relationship gurus. I try to pay them dust because, first of all, if I want to see a therapist, I'm going to go to a real one. One with a little plaque with a, a, de a degree and a license and like a university on their wall. So, one of those. That's who I'm going to take advice from. I'm not going to come to you, Mr. Social Media Man, who apparently feels like he knows everything in the world and want to give relationship advice. I'm not coming to you for advice. So I pay these people dust. However, this gentleman who I see periodically through the timeline, um, always in his car, giving out relationship advice, um, apparently he got caught, or he didn't get caught, but his cheating allegations from the past have came back to bite him in the ass, and apparently his wife... Here's my problem with this entire situation. The only reason why I'm talking about it. His wife, who is Miss Bonnet on the left, um, is getting dragged up and down the internet for more than one reason. One being her bonnet. Two being her ensemble. Three being uh, her passive aggressive nature in the video. And my problem is why he even felt it necessary to drag her into this mess is beyond me. Kind of like what Portia said down there in the comments. Narcissistic. He one of them, uh, he gives, it's very much so misogynist situation. If you ask me, you 
just feel the need to drag her into it just to cover your own ass. You the one that was out tipping and dipping. She was at home in her body making cookies and things of that nature while you was in your truck doing Lord knows what. So, I just didn't like the whole situation at all. But I felt necessary to address because it was all, of, like I said, it's all in my timeline and things of that nature for the past week. Now, do I care much? Not much. Probably not more than I'm going to do this last three minutes of this story. So, that's that. Um, he has, according to her, issue. Then he had the nerve. Oh, wait, because here's the best part. Because then he had the nerve to do a reaction video to this video. Oh, shit. Sorry. This video as if he wasn't the person in the video. Like he was reacting to his own video. I was just sitting there like... I'm not watching this shit. You want to know who I am watching? There's this guy on Facebook who does like, um, what is his name? He does reactions to the My 600 Pound Life show. What the fuck is his name? Justin, Justin something. When I tell you I scream bloody murder every time I watch them videos, of him reacting. He is hilarious. I mean hilarious. I be dead. I don't know. <laughs> I try not to laugh. Because it's not funny. My 600 pound life is not a funny situation at all. But his comedic commentary. Is hilarious. I forget his name. But I'll post it. Just in something. I just followed him today. Just, you just you wait. Just you. Justin Whitehead. There he is. I tell you I just found him today. Here he is. That's his page. Get over there and get your life and get ready to fall on the floor. I know my neighbors be sick of me because for whatever reason, I always stumble across his videos at like 3 or 4 in the morning, 5, 6 in the morning, early as shit. I'm just in my room and you know my apartment. These walls are thin as fuck. Cackling. I'm cackling, girl. I mean, screaming, hollering. They probably be like, what the fuck is he over there doing? Minding my business. But that's either here nor there. So check him out. He, that's what I'm watching. He's hilarious. Alright, so let's move on. Oh, Rasby. Rasby, Rasby. I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm going to do this as best as I know how. So Rasby's ex-girlfriend is accusing him of sexual assault. Um, along the lines of not only whooping her ass on a couple of occasions, but also... Um, in my opinion, it was a, a raping her, um, impregnating her, and, um, yeah. <laughs> I love when he gets to screaming. Anywho, um, I don't, uh, here's my issue with Raspy, and it's not even an issue, it's more so a, a trauma thing, um, People who have been assaulted, sexually assaulted in the past, sometimes have the tendency to go and inflict that same hurt onto other people. And we all know Raz B has been through the wire, like Shaka Khan, through it, okay? So, and that's not me, that's just studies show that people who have been sexually assaulted sometimes inflict that same assault on two others why i don't know you have to ask a professional therapist but that's just what the, the studies show so is rasby at this point one of those people so do i drag i still like drag him but i don't drag him as much like because i want to drag him because first of all you should have got your shit together and you should have went to therapy and you should have sat on the big comfy couch and said this is what's going on with me in my head before you decide to get into a relationship with somebody and then inflict the same thing that was inflicted on you on somebody else. That is what I want to say. However, I don't want to be like blaming and things of that nature because you know it's a very sensitive time in the world where you can't say shit and this is going on YouTube and they're going to block my ass if I go too off. But here's, here's my thought and my final, because I'm just here to spread the news. I don't make it, okay? Rasby, um, if indeed this did happen, you gonna need to come clean about it because you've been running around parading that Christos, you want us to cancel Christos, 
You want us to have a, a, a what's the Chris Stokes is over party? And what was the thing they did for R. Kelly? Surviving Chris Stokes. You want us to do all these things, but here you are doing the same shit to a woman. A black woman at that. I tell people all the time, like, society hates black women. And it's a sad, sad thing, but it's the truth. Society hates women, but they really don't fuck with black women. And it's just so sad to see. Anywho. Um, so, I'm not sure how, how I want to, like, proceed with this story. Y'all let me know in the comments. Like, he ain't shit for what he did, if he did it. But, because of his past, does he get a pass? Until he, like, gets it together? Like, I'm conflicted. Y'all let me know in the comment section. That's just, just let me know. And I'm gonna move on, because I done fucked around and got... I knew it was raining. That's why I've been sleepy. It's raining. Anywho. Um, good luck, Rasby, and good luck, ex-girlfriend. Um, yeah, let's move on, because I done fucked around and got an attitude. Oh, okay, let's talk. Oh, let's talk about this. Speaking of Rasby, this flows nicely. Um, here, let me, let me turn the volume on so y'all can hear it. This is Dwayne Wade, by the way. Ha! <laughs> Jay Boogie. <laughs> I stand maturity in grown ass men. I I stand maturity. I do. So that was Dwayne Wade. He was doing a interview on one of those little podcast shows and he was asked about how he feels about Boosie Punk ass and J Book from B2K um talking about talking down on his daughter, um, Zaya. And he gave the most like I would feel like a PR agent wrote it for him, but I know that was his words. Them was his words. That's how he feels dead ass. Him and his fine ass wife, Gabrielle Union. So the read of this entire situation was when he called Jay Boog, Jay Boogie, I screamed. First of all, Jay Boog, that just goes to show you, sir, you ain't even that important for him to know your real motherfucking name. <laughs> Which is more, because I've had to think about, like, what exactly did Jay Book contribute, contribute to B2K? And I was sitting back thinking, like, okay, Omarion was the singer. Lil Fizz was the rapper. Uh, Rasby was the dancer. And it, what was, what did Jay Book even contribute to the group? Did he have a verse? Like, did he, like, what was your contribution, sir? Why you running around here worried about Lil Zaya and what she doing and how she tipping and dipping and things of that nature. Like, you need to be carving you your own little legacy or something. Because at this point, Jay Boogie, you ain't got much to stand on but your... Well, shit, you ain't got your name because we can't get that right. You saw Dwayne Wade just called him Jay Boogie. <laughs> I love it. I stand a subtle shade. Because I'm sure he probably didn't even know that that was shady. But leave it up to me to let him know, like, yeah, that was epic shade. Iconic shade. Okay? Shout out to Dwayne Wade and Zaya and Gabrielle and the entire family for being inclusive. And, um, inclusive and accepting and all those other things that these young kids, these young gays and young LGBT, QRS, TUV, PIADAs, need in this life of sin. That's just that. Alright. So let's move on to uh who's next? Oh good. Yeah. Let's talk about this shit. Hold on. Matter of fact, before we get into that, let's talk versus updates. So <laughs> some cute vocals. <laughs> so the next verse is coming up. 
well, the one that we care about is going. Well, actually, we care about Earth, Wind, and Fire and the Izzy Brothers. Uh, as we stand for the plan, fantasy has a store for you. When that song come on, it's a fucking rap. I'm going off. That's one of my favorite old time Uncle Bops. What is that song called? Fantasy? I think it's called Fantasy. I believe it's Fantasy. Nonetheless, that's my shit. When that come on, I'm standing on the table. So, they're coming up on Easter weekend. Um, but this is May 8th. So, that's what? The, is that the Saturday before? When is Easter? I thought Easter was... May. Oh, shit, May. Wait a minute. That's a, like two months. Oh, fuck. Why are we talking about these girls? Nonetheless, um, Escape and SWV are coming up on May 8th. Um, I'm excited about this one. I am team... Shit, I thought I knew. I think I'm team SWV. I love Escape. You're my little secret. And that's how we should keep it. What I need from you is understanding. Every man loves a woman. I didn't want to do that, but <laughs> because it was shady, but whatever. Um, but I think I stand SWV more than I do Escape. So I'm team uh, SWV in this case. Who are you team? Leave it in the comments. But the gag, because whenever we do this versus thing, this all this conversation keeps coming about, and I'm about to just I'm gonna give my straight opinion because that's what we're here for. I expect you guys to leave your opinion in the comments and we can argue and debate and talk about it all day long. But this is just how I feel. Here we go. Okay, so Timberland then shook the table again and got this Chris Brown and Usher debate going up again. I'm sick of the bullshit because I feel like you girls have been giving Usher the Raymond like way too much and paying him way too much dust and I'm not with the shit. Now, I love Chris Brown. It's no secret. Y'all know I live for Chris Brown. I do. Up until maybe like maybe the Fortune album. Anything after that, it got a little, you know, redundant for me. Um, however, you girls be paying Usher like Usher is not the Usher that we was listening to when we was fucking seven years old. Um, you make me wanna and doing all of that. Y'all be paying Usher dust like he ain't got a diamond plaque on his wall. Like, I get that we like Chris Brown, and, you know, it's like, here's what I think. Usher is like our our cousin, our favorite cousin. You know we all got a favorite cousin. I got a favorite cousin. And then your favorite cousin has a child, and then that becomes your favorite cousin just because that's his child or his or her child. That's the same scenario I get when I think about Usher and Chris Brown. I don't even understand why these two are mentioned in the same sentence because Versus usually puts people together from the same era and things of that nature. Chris came into our lives, what, 2005, four or five-ish? When we first went to high school? And Usher been in our lives since we was fucking seven. So 97-ish. Stop fucking playing with me. As if Confessions wasn't that girl. I just don't understand who is like, I can't, I can't get with it. Like y'all be paying Usher dust like Usher don't have bops 
on top of bops, on top of bops. Now, yeah, Usher did eventually at some point start doing some crazy shit with this music and doing the doing the most. But so did Chris Brown. You're not finna sit here and pretend like Chris Brown didn't give us two albums with 96 songs that didn't sound all the fucking same. We are not going to sit here and play in my face. Not my Fenty face. Not today. It's insulting. It's upsetting me and my homegirls that y'all continue to do Usher like this. Now, just because he ain't our favorite cousin no more because he had a child and that child's name was Chris Brown, now that's our favorite cousin, that don't mean you're going to discredit our original favorite cousin being Usher the Raymond, the third or the fifth or whichever number he is. Now, shit. Now, I'm tired of the bullshit. <laughs> Put Chris Brown up against like somebody from his era. Who, who, who could we put? Somebody put in the comments Justin, Be Justin Bieber, like Chris Brown and Justin Bieber. They got music together, like they got a couple of songs together. Um, speak on it, Jerry. Speak on it. None. No male R&B artist. Because he's the only one with a diamond plaque on his wall. Now, Exclusive is a good album. Don't get me twisted. Because between me and Chloe, back in the high school days, I guarantee we at least bought, between us two, 20 albums of Exclusive. Probably because we was trying to do that damn scavenger hunt. And, like, it was clues in the albums. But that's neither here nor there. The Exclusive was a really good album. And Chris Brown has a bunch of good albums. But it's not Confessions. Shit, for that matter, it's not 8701. Stop playing with me. We gonna move on. Because I done fucked around and got hot with the arrow. <laughs> but I love Chris Brown. Please do not get it twisted. I do. But he's no usher. Can we speak about live vocals? While we're sitting here, while we're, while we're speaking on it, can we speak on the live vocals? Put those side by side. Ushers is still there and still popping. I guarantee you if you ask Chris Brown to hit them same notes. Oh shit, it's backwards. I'm just saying. If you ask Chris Brown to hit them same notes, that's not, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But if you ask Usher to hit them same notes, he can do it. Usher D. Raymond can do it. That's all I'm saying. Shall we move on? Concur, but you know, he... Somewhere defending his booty in the jail cell and trying to find his next way out. Um, so while I'm in the mood of dragging, <laughs> why I'm in the mood to drag? Because I'm sick of her. I'm sick of her. I'm sick of Lil Mama. I'm very much so sick of her. So she didn't go on the internet and she wants to chime in too on the trans kids situation, just like Jay Boogie and things of that nature. Let me just, I'm not even gonna get, I'm just gonna talk about this, what she posted. Um, here's what she posted on her Instagram. I'm about to start a heterosexual rights movement, anti-LGBTQ bullying. Y'all fight so hard to be respected and some of you, not all, get a kick out of bullying people for having an opinion. How they dress, how their hair and or makeup looks, how much money they have, etc. There are so many people afraid to give their honest opinions because of if they do, the LGBTQ plus community will hear what they have, what they want to hear and take statements out of context. I don't have to prove myself by reminding people that I have loved ones of the LGBTQ plus community. We gonna talk about that in a second. Um, when I speak, I'm not trying to hurt anyone. I'm just speaking my truth, just like you all. 
Here's my problem with Lil Mama. And Lil Mama girl, I'm I'm not gonna give you too much because at the end of the day, you have already been blasted to the furthest corner of the earth as far as society, not just the LGBT community is concerned, society in general is concerned. Like you had a chance to revamp after you slayed that left eye part in that TLC biopic. You ate that shit up and didn't leave a crumb on the table. You had a chance to revive yourself then, but you didn't. You still fucked it up. So, here's my issue. Lil Mama, the whole anti, the word anti cooks me. And then you went ahead and did like an interview, like something along the words of combating the LGBT community socially because you feel bullied. Okay, so what the fuck do you call what you said about the little trans children and things of that nature? What the fuck do you call that? I don't get this double-sided how you think you can say what you want to say, but then when we reply, now we're the bullies. But you coming for the kids. It's okay to have an opinion. People get this whole thing of, it's just my opinion. You can have an opinion. I got several of them. But bitch, if your opinion is offensive, keep that fucking shit to yourself. Simple. This is not rocket science. What we sit here and do and kiki and hee hee ha and all this shit, this is for comedic relief to, you know, laughing kiki and things of that nature. It is no malice behind it. But however, motherfuckers like you and J Boogie and Little Boosie done went out and Spewed malice against the community, and now y'all want to be mad because we clap back. Get the fuck over it. You old hateful hoe. You's a hateful hoe. And your lip gloss ain't never been as popping as you said it's been. Except in the first video. Let me not get little mama too much because let me tell you something. G Slide is the shit. And Shorty Get Loose with Chris Brown is the shit. But other than that, little mama, you ain't got shit coming. And I don't know who you're going to get to join this little community. Oh, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Um, that statement. I don't have to prove myself by reminding people that I have loved ones of the LGBTQ plus community. Let me tell you something. Because black people get this kind of shit twisted. Just because you got your cousin is gay or your sister's a lesbian, that don't mean you can't be homophobic or transphobic or any of those phobics. Let's be clear. There are a whole bunch of homophobic people and transphobics who they, it could be your best friend. Best friend could be gayer than Christmas. And you could still be homophobic. I don't know why you think that those two can exist in the same space. They can. They very well can. I've seen it. How you got your brother is one of the girls, but here you go on the WWWs talking greasy about the gays. The two can exist. I'm just saying. So that whole I got it's kind of like the when white people say I got a I got a black best friend. That don't mean you can't be racist. Stupid. Same concept, different scenario. That's all. Moving on to more pressing matters that will possibly change our lives. Unlike the... Oh. Is that it? That's it. Okay, maybe not moving on to more pressing matters. Listen. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for joining us this week on the Library Live. If you would like a Go Be Great hoodie, unfortunately you can't have one because they are sold out. However, you can head... <laughs> I love bragging on some sold out shit. <laughs> you can head over uh, to the Everything and Then Some podcast, Facebook page, Twitter page, Instagram page, any of those pages, and get you one of the uh, EDSP long sleeves or the, uh, what's the other one? The Facts Are Facts. Get one of those, but you can't have this one, unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, we will see you guys next Thursday. I don't think we're doing a library live podcast tomorrow. Why? Because I, this is the good thing about being a one-man show. I ain't got to run this shit by no, but I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I don't feel like it. We'll pick this up on Monday. <laughs> the Library Live podcast will be on Monday morning, 11 a.m. 
Because by then, I've even got my wig on straight and things of that nature. So we'll check us out on Station Head. I think I want to move. I think I'm going to move soon from Station Head. Because it's like a hassle. Like, and everybody can't get to it. And it's only for Apple people. And I get it. It was It's convenient, but I want it to be for everybody. In the whole wide world. And it's not for everybody in the whole wide world. So, what happened to Nene in that little show she was doing? I have to find her on social media and see what's going on about that. But anyway, um, sidebar. I love you guys for watching. Let me go find out what I'm going to eat, as I always do on Thursday nights. Uh, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Peace out. Go be great. But not in this hoodie because they sold out and you ain't got one. Sorry. <laughs>